Hello all, welcome to AWS Tutorials. My name is Castro Kiran. In the last video, we have understood what is meant by virtualization, what are the different types of virtualizations that we have, and we have also seen a major difference between a shared host and a dedicated host. In this video, we are going to talk about four important concepts that are available in the EC2 service. So first, we will begin our session with a brief introduction towards an EC2 service. And then we'll be understanding what is meant by an instance or an EC2 instance. And then we'll be talking about what are the different states that are available for an EC2 instance. And finally, we'll be talking about the billing aspects that comes with respect to the EC2 service. So first, let us talk about an introduction towards EC2 service. As we know that the full form of EC2 is Elastic Compute Cloud. Here, we are going to use this EC2 service in order to create the computing resources. So usually by using EC2 service that is available in the AWS cloud, we are going to create the virtual machines. Now, what does it mean by virtual machines? Virtual machines are known as servers. Usually in real time scenarios, we used to have the physical servers. Nowadays, once the cloud computing came into the market, people had started shifting their resources into the cloud domain. So in order to maintain the servers in the cloud environment, we are going to create the servers in the cloud domain. That servers are called as virtual machines. So virtual machines are actually the servers that we are going to create in the AWS cloud. It can be any cloud, but with respect to the AWS cloud, we have this service, which is known as EC2. Now, let's say we have a physical server, which is available on site. Now, when a server is available on site, what actually happens is you need to maintain the server. Let's say you need a specific room for that. You need the maintenance team. You need multiple teams to work for the servers so that server should never go down and the application will be up and running. But nowadays, as cloud came into the market, what cloud domains or cloud service providers is telling is, you don't have to bother about whatever the servers that are available. So we will take care of the server maintenance part. What you have to do is you use our cloud service provider and then you create the servers on the cloud platform. And when you create the servers on the cloud platform, those servers are called as virtual machines. Now, if you ask me, where are these virtual machines gets created? Virtual machines are going to get created in the data centers of AWS cloud. We have seen in the S3 service regarding the understanding of AWS global infrastructure. We have understood AWS global infrastructure has got divided into multiple layers, such as regions, availability zones, and then elastic edge caches, regional edge caches under. Now, where are these virtual machines gets hosted? The virtual machines gets hosted inside the data centers that are available inside an availability zone and also inside an region. So this is how the virtual machines gets created. So here, with respect to the EC2 service, we need to remember one important thing, which is EC2 is actually a region-specific service and also availability zone resilient. Just like S3 service, S3 is basically a global service, but whereas EC2 is a region-specific service. Suppose, let's say, you are working in Mumbai region. You have created one EC2 server or EC2 instance in the Mumbai region. Now, tomorrow, when you go and check in the same region, only then the EC2 instance will be available. If you are creating the resources in a particular region, you have to go inside that region to see the resources, whatever you have created. Suppose, let's say you have created the resources in the Mumbai region, but if you switch to the North Virginia region, you will not be able to find out the resource. That's what region specific service, which is EC2. But whereas S3 service is a global service, you don't have to bother about which region you are going to create a bucket. The only thing is you have to select the availability zone in the S3 service. But whereas in EC2 service, we are going to specify the region and we are also going to specify the availability zone. And that's why this EC2 service is basically a region specific service and also availability zone resilient service. 
and whatever the EC2 instances that we are going to create, all these EC2 instances can be created on a shared platform and also a dedicated platform. If you don't have an idea about what is meant by a shared host and a dedicated host, I would request you to watch the previous video where I have discussed about what is meant by a shared host and what is meant by a dedicated host. But remember, all the EC2 instances can be launched either on a shared host or on a dedicated host, depending upon the requirement of the organization. So this is a brief overview about the EC2 service. Now let's talk about what is meant by an instance. We know that server is something which is available on site or a physical server is something which is available on site. Now, when you create the same server in the cloud environment, that is called as instance. Okay, a virtual server which is created on the cloud environment is known as instance. Since we are going to use the EC2 service in order to create these servers, which are also called as instances, these kind of instances are called as EC2 instances. The EC2 instances are the servers that are going to get created on the cloud environment. Let us understand what are the different states that are available for an EC2 instance. Let's say you have launched one EC2 instance. I'll be discussing about how to launch an EC2 instance in the upcoming videos. But before that, let us understand what are the different states of an EC2 instance. Let's say that you have launched one EC2 instance. After launching the EC2 instance, what are the different states that will be available? And how an EC2 instance will progress from one state to another state? Usually, any AWS EC2 instance will have six different states. Let's see what are those six states. The first state is known as pending state. Let's say you have launched one EC2 instance. Immediately after launching the EC2 instance, you will see the instance state as pending. Now, when you see the instance state as pending, what does it actually means is the EC2 service is preparing our EC2 instance according to the configuration that we have given. So technically, when the EC2 instance state is in the pending state, this is something where we cannot use this instance. Technically, it is about to get launched. So that is why we will see the pending state. Once after pending state gets completed, what will happen is you will see the instance state as running. Now, once you see the instance state as running, for every EC2 instance, there will be a public IP and a private IP. By using the public IP, we can connect to the EC2 instance. When you can connect to the EC2 instance, only when you see the instance state as running, then only you will be able to connect to that instance and then you can perform the activities according to your requirement. That's called as a running state. Remember, when the EC2 instance is in the running state, the AWS will charge you for the EC2 instance usage capacity. Let's say if you are there within the free tier limit, you don't have to bother about the charges. But if you are using the EC2 instance beyond the free tier capacity, AWS will definitely charge you for that. I'll be talking about the billing aspect of EC2 instance in some time. Let's look about the third state. The third state of an EC2 instance is known as a stopping state. Let's say you have used the EC2 instance for one hour, two hours. After your usage, you want to stop the instance. Now, in order to stop the instance, we have this option where you can stop the EC2 instance that you are working. Now, once you stop the EC2 instance, the instance will immediately show an option which is called as a stopping state. So this stopping state is actually something where you are not going to shut down the instance. Okay, the instance is not going to shut down here. And when the instance is in the stopping state, you don't have to bother about the billing. So always remember that once after you complete your usage of the EC2 instance, make sure to stop the EC2 instance. So when the EC2 instance is in the stopped state, you will not be able to connect to the EC2 instance. And also whatever the application that you are running in that instance, that application will also face the downtime. So make sure whether you want to stop the instance or whether you want to keep on running the instance throughout its lifetime. It all depends upon the requirement. And once the EC2 instance is in the stopping state, you don't have to bother about the billing that comes because there won't be any kind of billing once the EC2 instance is in the stopping state. Once it crosses the stopping state, the next state is known as stopped state. Now what happens here? 
once the ec2 instance is completely stopped you are not going to get the e billing for that ec2 instance and also make sure that whatever the application that you have hosted in that particular instance that application will also not work but again one thing that we have to remember is whatever the additional resources that you have used in order to create the ec2 instance for all those additional resources the billing will come what are those additional resources let's say whenever you are creating an ec2 instance you are going to configure the storage capacity and this storage capacity is known as ebs volume elastic block storage so we'll be talking about elastic block storage as a part of this ec2 service but here let us just focus on understanding the concept ebs volumes are something which are used to create the storage capacity for an ec2 instance so the for the instance the, there won't be any charge but whatever the resources that you have used in order to create the ec2 instance such as ebs volumes for that the charge might occur the next state is known as shutting down state now let's say you have used the ec2 instance and you don't want this ec2 instance anymore now what you can do in that case is you are going to shut down that instance now once the instance is coming into the shutdown state you don't have to bother about the billing here but what happens when the instance is in the shutting down state is whatever the data that you have stored inside the ec2 instance or whatever the application that you have deployed into the ec2 instance that entire data will be lost and there is no way of getting back that instance once you stop the or once you shut down the ec2 instance once the shutting down state gets completed the final state is known as terminated what actually means terminated terminated means once you terminate the ec2 instance the instance will be permanently deleted from your aws console and there is no way of getting back that ec2 instance by any chance if you accidentally terminate an ec2 instance the all the data that is available inside that ec2 instance will also be gone and whatever the data that is attached that such as ebs volume or the root volumes all these things will also be permanently deleted but here we can also save the data whatever you have stored in the ebs volume with a different method but we are not going into the that detail level as it is just an introduction towards the ec2 instance so these are the six different states that are available for any ec2 instance pending running stopping stopped shutting down and terminated once the ec2 instance is in the terminated position that means the ec2 instance is permanently deleted from your aws console and there is no way of getting back the ec2 instance once it gets terminated i hope you got an idea about what are the different states of an ec2 instance now let us talk about the billing aspect of ec2 service usually when we are working with aws free tier account for all the instances that you are going to create in the aws cloud you are going to get 750 arch per month so only 750 arch you are going to get for all the instances that you are creating in the entire aws cloud it doesn't matter in which region you are creating or in which availability zone you are creating for all the instances that are available in the aws cloud which are there in the running state you will be getting 750 arch per month if the instance is in the stopped state you don't have to bother about this 750 arch this 750 arch will be counted only when the instance is in the running state so you have to be very careful about when you are working with multiple instances you have to understand how the billing gets generated so on a large scale you are going to get complete 750 arch per month for all the ec2 instances that are available in the aws cloud especially if they are there in the running state now this is applicable only for 12 months because we know that whatever the aws account that you are going to create this aws account you are going to get for free of cost for 12 months of period after 12 months of period either you have to extend that um, account by paying the bills or you have to terminate that account or aws itself will terminate by providing you a mail information but however remember that for 12 months of period you are going to get 750 arch per month for all the ec2 instances that you are going to create in the aws cloud now let's talk about the free tier eligible instances so here in aws cloud we have different types of instances let me talk about the type of instances in the next video 
But here, let us understand what is meant by free tier eligible instances. Usually, whenever you want to launch the instances, we have to select what type of instance we are going to work. In general, when we are working with free tier capacity or free tier AWS account, we are going to launch a particular type of instance, which is known as T2.micro. And again, don't bother about what is this T2.micro. I'll be discussing about this particular thing in the next video. But here, whatever the instances that you are going to create in the AWS cloud, especially the free tier account, we are going to use the T2.micro instances. Suppose, let's say you need another configuration type of EC2 instance. Yes, you can use that. But what happens is the billing gets generated further. So make sure whenever you are going to launch an EC2 instance, you have to launch the T2.micro instance to avoid the billing. But if there is a real need of working with any other types of EC2 instances, you have to pay the bill for them. AWS will generate the bill based upon the usage that you are going to use. But this T2.micro will not be available in all the regions that are available in AWS. By any chance, if you are not seeing the T2.micro instance in the region that you are currently working, in all the regions where T2.micro is not available, T3.micro will be available. So T2.micro, if it is not available, T3.micro will be available. If T3.micro is not available, T2.micro will be available. But usually in almost all of the regions that are available in AWS Cloud, we have the availability of T2.micro instance only. So make sure of using T2.micro so that you can avoid the billing that comes to your AWS account. Let's understand in a broader way how the billing will work. We know that 750 ads you are going to get per month. Let's say in a month, you are going to launch one EC2 instance. Now, when you launch one EC2 instance, assume that throughout the month, the instance is in the running state. So here, what will happen? You are going to get 750 free ads. Okay, in a month, you are going to get 750 free ads. But when it exceeds 750 ads, what will happen? You are going to be billed. Now, let's say in another month, I am going to launch some three instances here. Now, when we launch three instances, do we get 750 ads for each instance? No. So what happens is the whole amount of free ads is 750 ads. Now, since you are having three instances which are in the running state, this 750 ads will be divided by three. Why three here? Because we are we are having three instances that are there in the running state. So per instance, how many free ads you are going to get? You are going to get 250 free ads only. So if an instance is exceeding more than 250 free ads in a month, obviously for the 251 hour, what will happen is the billing gets generated. Let's say that in the third month, instead of launching three instances, you have launched six instances here. Now, when the instances are six, what will happen? So total arch is 750. So 750 divided by six. So per instance, how many free arts we are going to get? We are going to get 125 free arts. So this is how the AWS will charge you according to the instances that you are going to launch in the AWS cloud. Till the time you are there in the free tier account or free tier capacity, you don't have to bother about the billing. But once you exceed the 750 hours per month of category of billing, obviously AWS is going to charge for that billing capacity. So this is about a brief understanding about how AWS will charge you when you are using the EC2 resources beyond the free tier capacity. So in this video, we have discussed about what is meant by an EC2 instance, why we are going to create an EC2 instance, and what are the different states that are available for an EC2 instance. And we have also seen the billing aspects of the EC2 service. In the next video, we are going to talk about another important concept that is available in the EC2 service. Thank you.